Good morning. Glad you're all here with us to worship today and receive God's gifts. Uh, today can be, uh, this season can be really hectic for a lot of people. Uh, and everybody's in such a rush. Uh, the world is just, uh, you know, getting crazier and crazier. Uh, but our theme for this Advent season is peace. We're going to hear from the prophet Isaiah, who proclaims Jesus as the Prince of Peace. And we're going to invite, uh, invite everybody to slow down a little bit. Um, as you can see, we've got the tree up, we've got the Advent candle up, but we're not fully ready for Christmas. We're going to put that off a little bit just to remind ourselves that we don't have to rush through Advent. We don't have to rush through our days. We can take time to slow down and find peace in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's going to be our theme for Advent throughout this season. Uh, we will be decorating on Sunday, December 18th, after our 1030 service. That will be right before uh, then we go into our Christmas celebration. Uh, just as a reminder each week that, uh, that it's not Christmas yet, it's time to slow down, it's time to have peace while the rest of the world is rushing around. Uh, we start our Advent midweek services this Wednesday at 1130, so please join us for that. If you can't be here live for service, we are going to record it and put it on to the website right away afterwards so you can watch the Advent service that evening. Uh, I want to thank everybody who helped out with our Thanksgiving efforts to provide meals for people in our community. Uh, just to uh, point out one uh, group that we're able to help. We may not think about it because we don't always see it, but within our Troy Public Schools, uh, we have 22 families that includes 33 kids who are homeless currently. And so we were able to provide meals for them. Uh, we raised 60 meals total uh, that helped a lot of different people, and we like to do that again for Christmas. So if you do have an opportunity to go over to uh, the Jewel and to uh, invite the customers to help out with that effort, please see me afterwards. There's a sign-up sheet in the back with suggested dates, uh, but really uh, and any time you're available would be helpful. Uh, my Israel presentation is next Sunday after the 1030 service, so please join us for that. It'll be in the gym where we have a nice big screen and we can project the pictures nice and large for everybody. We'll have some refreshments as well. So I invite you to join us for that. So let's begin our first Sunday in Advent worship as we sing the Advent of our King. come to our Lord for some peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. With the psalmist we pray, our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, 
confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you, of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Here's the good news. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we have received God's peace, please share that peace with those around you. Our intro invites us to receive our King who comes to bring us righteousness. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. Save us from pray, O God. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made the light to shine upon us. Find the festival sacrifice with the Lord, a lovely sacrifice of the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give you thanks. You are my God, I will extol you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold, your King is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated to hear the word of the Lord. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 2. 
The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. And many peoples shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 13. O no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing, Savior of the nations, come. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said, But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, 
but the Father only. As were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one left. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. We sing our creedal hymn. Jesus Christ, our Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. I suppose we're all looking for a little bit of peace in life, but so rarely do people find it. We work and work and work to build up to a holiday like Thanksgiving and Christmas, and yet it can still be so chaotic when the day comes. Or we put in all the hard work for a little bit of a break, a vacation, and then it flies by far too fast. We work all our lives to get to retirement, and then we're twice as busy in retirement as we were beforehand. Never seems like we can achieve the peace that we so desire in our lives. It just doesn't seem to come. And if you look back over the course of human history, it's the attempts of achieving peace, whether on a personal level or on a worldly level, uh, it, the record doesn't seem all that encouraging as we look into the future and the prospects that we will ever achieve world or personal peace. And perhaps that might lead us to finally understand that true peace in this world does not come from this world or from the people of this world. But Isaiah proclaims to us Jesus as the Prince of Peace the one who can give us peace, not as the world gives, but only as he can give, the true peace that comes from him. And so this Advent, as the world is in so much of a rush and a hustle and a bustle, and people are fighting in lines and cutting each other off on the roads and scrambling to make everything come together, let's take some moment to slow down to remember that Jesus comes to us in this time before Christmas to bring us peace. So throughout this Advent season, that will be our theme each Sunday, and we're gonna take a look at different ways that we've tried to make peace in our lives and discover that really it's only in Jesus, the Prince of Peace, that we can never find it. One way that people have sought peace in life is to create laws by which people will live, whether it's on the national or even international level or on a personal level, 
We think that if we just have the right rules in place and that people follow those rules, then there will be peace. We try and come up with rules and laws that forbid things that break the peace and that encourage things that promote the peace. And if we just had the right rules, if we just had enough laws, then there would be peace. We try to establish rules in our houses, with our families. This is the way it's going to work. Sometimes we have to write it down. Sometimes they're spoken out loud. Sometimes they're just understood. But if we would just follow the rules, there would be peace in the house. We do that on a local and state and national level too. If we just write the correct laws and have enough of them and people obey the laws, then there will be peace. And if we have the right treaties and the right agreements and the right international laws, then nations will get along and there will be no more war. We'll have world peace. But how's that going? Has anybody figured out a way to do it? Have we come up with the right rules, enough laws? The problem is that these rules and these laws are created by sinful people. And we can't create such a perfect set of laws that it's going to be just right. There's always going to be unintended consequences. People are going to find ways to get around the laws and avoid them. And sometimes sinful people make up laws to benefit their own selves and not promote the general peace. They're more concerned with protecting their power and their wealth. Sometimes people make laws based on their own self-interests. They try to tip the scales in their favor. They come up with their definition of what's fair. And the problem is that's often different than what other people might think is fair. Somebody might say, well, let's split it 50-50. But then another person might say, but I put in more time. And another person might say, but I put in more effort. And back and forth we go. Nobody wanting what's truly fair, but wanting to get a little bit more than the other person. And so we can't come up with some perfect set of laws or perfect rules to make everything just right, whether in our house or in our nation. We're sinful people. And... Our tendency is to fight for ourselves. After all, who determines what's fair and right and just? You might have your definition and somebody else might have theirs. And the only way to settle that is by fighting, by division, by warfare. That's the result that Isaiah points out here, is that we often have to use spears and swords that we have to learn the art of war, that we need armies to defend us, we need words that can defend us, sometimes even fists or knives or guns to get our way. And so rather than coming up with this perfect system of peace in this world, we see a world in chaos, a world fighting so desperately to get their own way, a world at war. Where can we find peace in this world? Well, there is a set of laws that are perfectly just and holy and right, and that's God's law. The Ten Commandments. If you think about it, if everybody were to follow the Ten Commandments perfectly, then there would be peace, right? There would be peace in our homes, there would be peace in our nation, there would be peace in the world. Because what is the Ten Commandments all about? Are they not about love? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. If we did that, if we loved and fulfilled the law, there wouldn't be any fighting. There wouldn't be any uh, division in this world. There'd be perfect peace. Unfortunately, we are not able to follow God's law. We are sinful creatures who want to replace God's perfect law with our own ways and our own laws, and our own rules, and what's in our own interest. But Isaiah prophesies about a day to come, a latter day, when a law will go out from the Lord, 
when the word of, the word of the Lord will go out from Jerusalem. Now we're kind of stuck with uh, the translation that we have here for this word that is often translated law, but the word is bigger than that in the Hebrew. When we think of law, we think of commandments, we think of rules, do this, do not do that. But the word in Hebrew is Torah, and it means authoritative teaching or instruction from the Lord. And it encompasses more than just commandments, but all that the Lord says. When we think about the Torah in the Old Testament, it means the five books of Moses, Genesis through Deuteronomy. And certainly in those books, you will find commandments from the Lord, but you find more than that. You find God's authoritative instruction to his people about how he created the world in love. And when his people turned away from him and fell into sin, he was gracious and merciful to them. The Torah tells us about he chose, how he chose out of all the people of the world, Abraham and his descendants, to reveal God and be a light to the world. It tells about how God brought his people, Israel, out of Egypt and through the, the wanderings in the wilderness and to the promised land. You see, the Torah not only tells about the law, it tells about the gospel, the good news of what our God has done and the promises of what he will do in those later days. And in those latter days, he will send out an authoritative word instruction for his people to teach them his ways and his paths. And the good news is that the word has gone out. That authoritative word of the Lord went out when Jesus, the Son of God, went out from the Father. When the word of God became flesh and walked among us in the ways of the Lord and traced out his paths of peace. In Jesus Christ, God revealed himself to us and the way that leads to peace. And it's not through more laws, it's not through trying harder, but it's through the cross of Christ, where Jesus came to bring peace to us by shedding his blood on the cross, thereby reconciling us to the Father and bringing to us the Father's forgiveness. And having been forgiven, then we share that forgiveness and make peace with one another. In Jesus Christ, we receive that knowledge of how to walk in peace. And we don't need to learn war anymore. We don't need to use our words to manipulate others and get our own ways. We don't need to use our fists to force others to do what we want them to do. But rather, walking in love, we make peace by forgiving one another and following Jesus Christ in the way of righteousness. God's law brings peace to our lives. That Torah in Jesus Christ proclaims us forgiven. For here today in these latter days, the word of God, that authoritative teaching has come to us again and pronounced us forgiven in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And here in his word as he comes to us and preaches to us today, we learn again that way that leads to peace. Jesus is the perfect revelation of God's word and his peace to us. For Jesus said, when I am lifted up, I will draw all nations to myself. He's the fulfillment of what Isaiah prophesied, that in those latter days, the mountain of the Lord and the mountain of his house will be raised up. In Isaiah's day, when people thought about the mountain of the Lord, they would think Mount Zion. And when thought about the house of the Lord, they thought about the temple. It's the place where God dwelt among his people. But the mountain of the Lord and the house of God's presence find their fulfillment ultimately in Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. He is the temple of the Lord, and he was lifted up, first on the cross for our forgiveness, and then he was raised from the dead and ascended into heaven where he graciously rules over this world and the church to bring peace to us and through us to others. Jesus is lifted up among us today, and we flow to him, and the nations flow to him this day to come and receive that word of forgiveness, to hear that word of instruction, and to learn peace, not war. You know, it may not seem like it, but the nations are screaming to the Lord. 
we don't see it necessarily. In fact, when we look around, it looks more or less like people are running away from the Lord. After all, water doesn't flow uphill. How can we expect people to flow uphill to the Lord? No, it seems like people are rejecting the gospel. They're rejecting that word. They're rejecting that peace and how sad that is. But the truth is that over the centuries, people have been flowing to the Lord. In the first centuries, it was the Jews and the Samaritans, the Greeks and the Romans. But God's word continued to go out and be spread. And the gospel spread. And people from Europe and Africa, from Asia and Antarctica and uh, Australia, from North America and South America, from all over the world, people from every tribe and language and nation and people have been streaming to the Lord because they have found that that's the only place where there can be peace. It's only in his love, in his forgiveness, that there is peace in the world. And we are among those people that have streamed to the Lord, who come to him to get today to find that peace. Isaiah encouraged the people of his day, saying, Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. He spoke of the day when all the nations would flow to the Lord. And if they flew to, uh, would flow to the Lord, then why not his people first and foremost? And if indeed the nations are flowing to the Lord and will continue to go to him to find peace, should not we, his people today, be the first to come to him and experience that peace. And so come, let us be instructed in the word of the Lord. Let us come to Jesus, the Prince of Peace, to find peace in this time of year when our lives can be so hectic. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord, learning to be forgiven and to forgive one another and walk in love. Come, let us have peace now. And look forward to that day, that latter day, when Jesus will come and establish peace forever. Come, O church of God, let us walk in the light of the Lord, and let us have peace this Advent. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And now may that peace of God, which surpasses our understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as we come before our Lord to pray in peace. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, to rescue us from the dangers of this dark world by the advent of your Son, that we may ever walk in his light and learn the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, though we do not know the day or hour of your Son's appearing, grant that we would always be prepared by sending us faithful pastors and teachers who will boldly proclaim your word of law and gospel to us, that we may be constantly encouraged and built up in our faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God of Jacob, you have established your kingdom as a beacon to call all nations to yourself. Teach us to walk in the light of your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord of love, visit our homes and defend us from the temptation to walk in the works of darkness that husbands and wives may love one another and raise their children in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty Lord, you are the authority to whom all temporal authorities must bow. Give wisdom and godly insight to our president, our governor, and all who make and administer and judge our laws. Grant peace among the nations, that swords may be beaten into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate Lord, look with mercy upon the sick. Visit them during these Advent days to comfort them with your saving gospel. If it be your will, grant healing and peace to those on our prayer list, those we name before you in our hearts, and all for whom we pray. Lord, in your mercy. Draw us unto yourself, O Lord, gathered around the holy body and precious blood of your Son in the sacrament of the altar. Sustain us in saving faith, that we may eat and drink for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O loving Father, you alone know the day and the hour when our Lord Jesus Christ will come again in glory. Keep us steadfast in the one true faith, 
that we may ever be ready for his appearing through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith, and above all, firmly take to heart the words with which Christ gives to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us, when, by pouring out his precious blood, he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine, that is, his body and blood, as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hear now how our Lord shed his body and blood for you and for me. Our Lord Jesus, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at his command, and with his own words, we receive his testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
stand now as we sing our post-communion canticle, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, The King Shall Come When Morning Dawns. God's peace, but I truly pray that you will go in God's Advent peace this day. Amen.